uh, character card um, project. Today, what we're going to be doing, if you take a look at my finished one, we're going to be popping in a rectangle background for our first stock photo and a second, but we're going to be including or imposing an image into that second one. In addition to that, we're going to be doing some side effects as well with those rectangles by creating these stroke bounding boxes kind of around them and adding in some text. There is going to be a part four that's going to go over both the background and how to install brush files, um, in which case we're going to use these splatter brushes. So stay tuned for that. We're going to hop back into here and where you should be right now if you're ready for this part three is that you have both your images, uh, both their layer masks are complete and you're ready to go. In fact, I didn't actually rename this other one. You have the one called stock photo. Uh, they're both stock photos. So stock photo two will do for that one. And I'm going to hide that layer by clicking that eyeball because I'm really going to focus on this one for the first part today. So in fact, I'm actually going to hide this right now as I make a new layer. So to make, oh, here are all our, our layers as a, as a review. And down here, this plus sign, uh, that creates a new layer. So if you go ahead and click that, it always makes the new layer above the one that you have selected. So keep that in mind because I actually later want this one below the photo. It's right now called layer one. I really think it's a good habit to start naming your layers so you don't forget what they are. We're gonna call this color rectangle. Spelling does not count. That's probably not how I spell rectangle. Um, but that is what this is going to be. So in order to make that rectangle, we're going to use the rectangular marquee tool, which is right here. The hotkey for it is M and it is the default tool of this subset of four. So you could, could just hit M. M as in mom on your keyboard. When you have this, you can click and drag and it'll make a rectangular selection of wherever you go. If you hold shift, it'll make a square. But I do kind of think a taller rectangle of some sort is the ideal way to go for this. Just to get a different look than mine, because right now I put that on the left here, I'm going to throw that bottom right and just see what happens. I am doing this off the cuff, so I don't know if it's going to work well compositionally or not. Now that it's down there, we need to fill it in um, with a color. If you look here, well, right where I am, gradient comes up by default, the hotkey being G. But if you click and hold on gradient, you're going to see paint bucket tool. Um, actually, I'm going to dial back as well. Back to the marquee tool. After you put a rectangle down, if you're inside the rectangle, you can click and hold and move it around. That's how I, I did that. All right, back to gradient. Click and hold on gradient and you want the paint bucket tool. It looks like a paint gallon that you'd get at like a Home Depot or Lowe's. What that does is it's gonna fill an entire space that you click in with one solid color. Right now though, if you look at the bottom right here, we just have white selected and then this light blue. If I switch to it, see I can switch these two colors. I'm gonna double tap on that light blue to bring up the color picker window. And since we're dealing with Green Bay here, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to get like a mid-tone green, like something like that. And then I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and once I'm ready, I click inside the square and you get a whole bunch of green right inside the square or rectangle, just like that. Now, we want to deselect this because right now you can still see that bounding box is up. The long way to do it, I think, is edit, deselect. This is why I don't even know. I never use this way. It might be in here. It might not. I don't think it's worth looking for. Ready? The easier way to deselect, Command D. That will deselect anything they have selected. It's a nice like wipe all, start fresh kind of thing. Command D, D as in dog. Then I'm gonna bring back my layer with Rogers and I'm gonna take the move tool. Oh, notice how though I didn't select Rogers. It selected the color rectangle. Reason being is I'm still on the color rectangle layer. So I'm gonna go back up to my original stock photo. What I wanna do so I want him to relatively fit inside here, so I do need to shrink him a little bit, at least his legs. I don't want his legs to be poking out. The rest can. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty good. Um, I am going to go ahead and zoom in here real quick and take a gander, make sure that looks, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, if you need to do any fine moving, you can use the arrow keys while it's selected and shimmy it like pixel by pixel. So let me click off of that onto the background. Yep, pretty happy. Now he is poking out of the left right here. If you don't want that, you could layer mask that left arm, but I think it's kind of cool with a 
they just fit in bottom wise. It looks like they're kind of popping out of that triangle. So, or rectangle. Something I might do with this rectangle too, I think the green is too green. So I want to sample a color kind of from his jersey, not too different from it anyway. I'm going to hit the I key, I as an infinite. That will select the eyedropper tool here. And I'm going to try to go for more of a neutral green just to check what it looks like. This might not look good. I'm going to go back to G for my paint bucket and I'll click inside the green again. Um, yeah, you know what? Not bad, not bad. Uh, I think I'm, I will take that, but I'm just going to change it a bit just so it stands out a little more. There we go. I think I like that green. My other green I thought was too saturated, too colorful. All right, he's done. So now we're going to hide him and him. Uh, you know what? You might want this scene for this. We're going to take our second one. And we're going to take the move tool. And we're going to move him kind of into a position that we want. Now notice, though, I don't like the fact that he's uh, diagonal to the right right now. I want to kind of flip him opposite. Easy way to do that. Go up to the top, edit, and then look for transform right here. And then down towards the bottom, you're going to see flip horizontal. Horizontal meaning left to right, vertical meaning up and down. So if I hit flip horizontal, there he goes. Now he's, he's looking to the other way, uh, but the 12 gets messed up. So I don't know if I actually want to do that. So I'm going to command Z my way back. I think it just, it's, he's, this is going to have to go over here and I'm going to have to move these other two to the left. I'm glad this actually happened because this is another time thing I can show you guys. Right now I have the stock photo selected of Rogers, not the color. So if I move one, it just moves Rogers. If I hold shift and I click the color rectangle layer, you'll see that it'll uh, select both. They're both that light gray color. I can then shimmy this around, get that kind of like into place like right here. Then I can take the other Rogers and get him back into a spot that I like. Maybe I like him behind this. Let's see what that looks like, where he's even poking out. Mm, nah, I like it on top better yep right there and we're just going to move him up a little bit right about there okay cool just something different enough anyway is what we're going for now we're going to make a new layer i'm going to make it below this one and we're just going to just use this just to kind of eyeball up an image relatively something something like that anyway i think that'll be good but what we're going to do now is by now you've had to researched a background photo. Now it won't be for the full whole background, it'll just be for this scenario. I have a picture of Lambeau Field here where the Packers play. So I'm gonna click and drag it from my desktop right into the image. And it's definitely too small, so I'm gonna make it pretty big by using these side boxes and then hit enter. Also taking the move tool, I'm just gonna get it relatively into a place kind of where I might want it. Now I will take the rectangle marquee tool and we'll just select an area. We'll see what this kind of looks like. You know, we're not going for anything uh, perfect here. I'm going to try to line it up with his foot relatively and like that. And while it's selected, I'm going to go ahead here and hit this layer mask button. And you should see that everything outside the selection will get masked out. That's perfect. This layer here is going to go behind everything. Then what I'm going to do, not with the, oh, this is huge. Once again, the mask is selected at the moment right here on the right. I want the image selected on the left for this part. Once that layer is selected, let's rename it to stock photo BG for background. And we're going to change the opacity from 100 somewhere down to like 50-ish, give or take. You can change this back up a little bit later if you want. And now just that Roger's legs there just really irritates me for some reason. But I don't like that either. There it is. That's what I wanted. So you can check and move your layers around a little bit. I, I want like I wanted him above that green rectangle, but he definitely looks better below uh, the front Rogers. Anyway, there his leg being in front of the other one just was was off or off putting anyway, to say the least. So. Um, here we have this. If you wanted to, you could go and layer mask anything. Like if I wanted it to look like he was coming out of the, or not coming out of the side of this, I could layer mask off his arm. Let me show you kind of what I'm talking about here with cloud. I made sure that his leg was crisp with the bottom of this one right there. 
Um, and I did a little bit of layer masking there on the legs just to keep that in place. Roger's here though, he's not close to the bottom of this one, so I'm okay with that. All right, that's it for this part. As you can see, this is really starting to take form. Next time we're gonna work on the proper background and we're gonna add in some um, text effects and uh, finish this project up in no time. So for now, we're gonna go up here to File and we're going to do Save. And we are good, you can close out of Photoshop. Save this image if you want. I will show you where I'm organizing my files as a last minute thing here. Go into here, go into digital art and character card, and there is where I've been storing my images. I got my two Rogers and uh, this one. Once the project's complete, then you can delete them, but save these for now just in case. I'm leaving the original one though right here on the, uh, the desktop. All right, go ahead, hit the Apple to button in the top and do log out and you guys are good. And I'll see you guys next time.